I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to have a talk, not a tour, about the food here in Nicaragua. We're not going to dig into specific foods, so I want to preface this before we dig in. We're going to be talking about what food is like here, and we're going to hopefully be kicking off a tour where we do a ton of showing you real foods, real restaurants, what it's really like going out to do a lot of food items here in the country. But before we do that, I want to do some expectation setting and give you a little bit of background information. So this may not be the video you're looking for, but stick with me. I think it's going to be interesting, and especially if you're looking at traveling to Nicaragua, this is something you probably want to know because there's a lot of confusion around food here in Nicaragua. That was a lot of sun all of a sudden. Okay, so here in Nicaragua, if you're traveling to Nicaragua, what you're probably going to find, unless you're extremely familiar with food of Costa Rica or Honduras, is that the food here in Nicaragua is probably quite different than you are going to be anticipating. Especially if you're coming from North America, there is a tendency to paint Latin American countries, especially culinary-wise, with a very broad brush. But that is not accurate. The food across Latin America varies wildly and just like you would expect in any region of that nature and size and population. If you went across Europe and said, oh, Europe has all the same food, people would be like, what are you talking about? England and Ukraine and Greece and Italy and Portugal, very different culinary experiences, let alone talking about Norway. Well, South America and Latin North America are a region with a larger geographic and larger population than Europe. And so you would expect there to be even more variation across the region. Whether or not there's as much variation as there is in Europe, I don't know. But there is a lot of variation. And the entire approach to food is wildly different between Mexico, Nicaragua, Colombia, Chile, Peru. Right? You're going to get just everything is different from cost to how it's prepared, the way the people eat, when they eat, everything. It is totally, totally different across the region. And here in Nicaragua, we actually have a market that is relatively unique. There isn't a whole lot of what we do here in Nicaragua that is replicated in other countries. Uh, to some extent, in Costa Rica, we are long historically been connected countries with a lot of shared population and, and traditions, and especially food. So there, if you're familiar, however, if you go Go to Costa Rica because it is such a touristy country. They, in many cases, you could spend a lot of time in Costa Rica and be relatively isolated from Costa Rican traditional food because there's so much accommodation for tourists and they know that North American tourists have no uh, uh, frame of reference for Costa Rican food and so they rarely present them with it. If you go out of your way, of course you're going to find it. It's very easy to find, but you also could very easily avoid it. But here in Nicaragua, where there's extremely little tourism, the majority of places have to cater to Nicaraguan audiences. That is who is going to be eating at restaurants everywhere, even in the majority of what feel like tourist zones, such as where I live here in Leon. There is a couple of major beaches right here, some of the most popular beaches in the country, and the food that is served there is universally Nicaraguan, with the rare exception of of like an Italian restaurant, but even at the Italian restaurant, they're gonna have a tiny bit of accommodations for Nicaraguans or else many Nicaraguans can't eat there. This is something to be aware of. Nicaraguans have an extremely, and this is this is what I wanna talk about, right? This frame of reference for eating in Nicaragua because it's, it's super important. If you're gonna be traveling here, there's a good chance you're going to be shocked. Now, some people are very food flexible and they don't need to be accommodated with special foods that are what they're looking for. They're not trying to replicate their food they just want to explore a new place and, and they're fine. When I go to a new place, other than being vegetarian, it's very easy for me to go out and find things to eat because I'm willing to eat basically anything. It's, you know, I'm never traveling for so long that I need to replicate food from back home. But there's a lot of people who need to have the food that they're used to and can't handle or, or don't want to handle new different foods, right? So, so it's important to understand where you fall in that spectrum. But for anybody, I want to give you a little bit of context to understanding what Nicaraguan food is like and why so that you at least are prepared for what you're going to find. And like I said, I, I'm planning on uh, Marcella, who's been on the channel. For those who, who follow my channel religiously, you know that this is going live while I'm traveling in Argentina. So I'm not able to go around. I've been scrambling to get videos done. Uh, I'm not able to travel around Nicaragua and do a bunch of food shooting right now, but it is on the schedule. What we're doing 
uh, Marcella, who's been on the show, and she did the episode on making ripochettas at home uh, just a few weeks ago, and that was pretty popular, and I think it was a fun, uh, aside from our regular videos, we're going to try to do more of that. She's been very busy right now because she is moving. She currently, for those who don't know, lives in Ciudad Sandino. Uh, we're going to try to film a whole bunch of her experience where she's moving out from Ciudad Sandino. We're going to show as much as we can of the community where she's at, which we've shown before, but we're going to like fully film her house and go into some cost and information so we can build up some information for you guys about Ciudad Sandino, right? Everybody always loves concrete information about uh, cost of living in different places. And then she is moving here to Leon into Barrio Sutiava so that because she works on the show, she's going to be on the show a lot more often because she's going to be based right here and is going to be hopefully helping with some of the uh, video tasks. Um, but importantly, filming. And she eats meat and she's Nicaraguan. So our plan is once we have uh, her moved here, which is pretty soon, like we already have uh, her house. She just hasn't moved into it yet, but she has the house and the keys. Uh, and I get the DJI Pocket 3 camera, which is needed for going to restaurants at night because that's normally when you go out to eat. And then we'll be able to get high quality, low light video, which is generally needed for doing good food shoots. And hopefully we'll be able to get some really good videos. And I want to just start having her go. And we're going to go to local places and, and different restaurants and show you what food is like here. Of course, we want to film like interesting things that tourists may be drawn to. But also I want to really dig into traditional Nicaraguan food and bars and restaurants and, and campestres and a bunch of stuff like that that nobody shows. And and really get you into a, a local food experience so that the, you can experience things in ways that only the most uh, adventurous and, and really dedicated tourists would ever reasonably be able to find, right? We live here in the barrio, so going out and finding street food and, and little tiny restaurants that are just, you know, two tables in someone's living room is actually pretty easy, but it's really hard for me to eat at them because they're almost always meat-based, so having her that we can film and she can explain uh, background to the food and stuff will be vastly entertaining and educational, I think. So that's going to be really good. So that is my plan that we're going to be doing that in the near future. And the dog makes her appearance known uh, and the dog makes her presence known. So that is the plan. But for now, I want to give you some context before we do that. So this will make all of that much easier for you to understand. First of all, Nicaraguan cuisine, unless you consider Costa Rica, is essentially unique. It is not copied to from other uh, parts of the region. The core of the diet here, and this is really important, right? Nicaragua is generally a, a lower income country, and so they need good, healthy protein base and calorie base uh, to make it that they, they have a good, healthy diet. And that base is gallo pinto. Pinto. Nicaraguans expect to eat this with every meal. Americans say things like meat and potatoes. Nicaraguans say the same thing, but it's gallo pinto. They always expect there to be gallo pinto or some kind of rice. So you may not eat full gallo pinto, which is a rice and beans with a very specific seasoning. Those of us who live here, generally people, not always, but generally people fall in love with gallo pinto. It is delicious. It is healthy. It is a staple of the diet, and uh, if you live if you live here and you love it, you're in great shape. If you live here and you hate it, it is going to be a problem. As a traveler, you can work around it, but it's uh, something that you need to expect that if you're going for breakfast or whatever, it is the base of most meals. If you're getting traditional Nicaraguan food, in nearly all cases, there's going to be gallo pinto involved. It is part of breakfast. You get eggs and a big pile of gallo pinto. Dinner could be fried chicken and gallo pinto. It could be steak, you like churrasco on the grill and gallo pinto. It could be fish and gallo pinto. There's any number of things. Yes, there's cases where you don't get it, but in general, you're going to get it. If you go out to the beach to some of the little fancier restaurants, not fancy, just more upscale than like street food, uh, you're likely to either get gallo pinto or get one of any number of regular rice dishes that replaces it. Basically, Nicaraguans would not be happy if they ordered dinner and didn't have rice included somewhere. It's just an expectation. So that is something you're, you're generally not going to get away from. If you go to a fancy foreigner-owned restaurant or something. Of course, they may not include rice with every meal, but they'll have the option of it. They can't afford not to, because if they don't, there's always going to be Nicaraguan families that refuse to eat at your restaurant because they won't eat anywhere without rice. And this is very surprising. We often, you know, make fun of Americans because I'm American, we're used to Americans, that they aren't willing to adapt to other diets. And to some degree, that's true. But I think in reality, you'll find that Americans are much better at adapting to other diets than many cultures of the world. It's just that we're used to Americans. And we're all used to someone who's picky. But if you actually go to other places, and it doesn't matter where you go, Spain, Italy, 
Nicaragua, the amount that the average person is willing to diverge from their regular diet is often quite a bit lower than even the Americans that we pick on for being picky. As a world traveler, one thing I have learned is I feel like my impression is that Americans are actually one of the better cultures for being able and willing to try different foods. And if you think about it, an average American going out to eat is going to say things like, hey, can we go out for Chinese or Italian? Do you feel like Peruvian tonight? Or maybe just burgers. Like you have a lot of different cultures represented in a normal meal decision process. But here in Nicaragua, most people go out for Nicaraguan every day and going out for anything else could be a few times a year if that experience. Like it would be a very specialty thing. Many people will never do it. It is not uncommon to meet people who've never had Chinese or Mexican food, even though those are foods uh, that are represented here. It's just not that common. If you were going to pick foreign foods that have a little bit more representation that people are likely to see, uh, Mexican is not terribly represented. There's a little bit of it, but uh, Venezuelan actually has a bit of a presence simply because there is a fair Venezuelan population here and Venezuelan street food is while completely exotic to Nicaraguans, it's nothing like any of the foods that are from here. It is something that is very approachable. It's not ingredients that they find strange. It's not flavors that they find strange. And likewise, coming from the north, pupusas from El Salvador are pretty well represented. It's one of the very few non-Nicaraguan foods that we can easily travel around and get. However, pupusas come from the region of El Salvador that traditionally was part of the same cultural region pre-Columbian era as Nicaragua. So in some ways, pupusas aren't really a foreign food. They're just from a different area of here <laughs> in, in that regards. So southern uh, El Salvador, all of western Nicaragua, and uh, northern Costa Rica were traditionally one culinary zone for the most part. Now, here in Nicaragua, instead of pupusas, we have quesillos, which uh, Salvadorans would find slightly interesting and slightly exotic, but very little, kind of the way that Americans would find Canadian. Canadian food to be slightly exotic. It's not going to shock you, but you'd be like, oh, I don't get this at home. Who puts gravy on their French fries, right? But it's all ingredients you're used to, just made in a different way. So food here in Nicaragua, a couple things you need to know. Uh, but one is the rice is ubiquitous and the rice and beans called gallo pinto, absolutely a staple. You will, you have to expect you're going to see it nonstop. And people complain that they're so tired of it and it's true, like it's so repetitive, but that is what Nicaraguans eat is repetitive food. They will get the same chicken and the same eggs and the same uh, gallo pinto day after day after day without even thinking about the fact that it's repetitive because they're used to a repetitive diet. To break from that often is a slightly problematic. And so restaurants that cater to variety rather than quality or price just don't tend to do very well. They can do okay. There are people who want variety. But even in relatively high class uh, uh, families, you're going to find that the amount of desire for variation is extremely low. It's just not a cultural thing here. Second, food is bland. This is not a spicy food country at all. A lot of people think because it lies between Mexico and Peru, I mean, it is between just really far from both, it, that it's going to be spicy on the spectrum in the same way that Mexico is not as spicy as Peru, but it must blend between them, right? No. Central American food is very bland from a spice perspective. So if you have a problem with spicy food, you're going to love it here because you're not going to just be running into spice all the time. I was recently in Mexico. You've seen my episodes shot in Mazatlan, but I was in Cancun with a friend who had lived here in Nicaragua for a long time. She's Canadian, but lived here. And, you know, in Nicaragua, you can safely eat anything on the table. There might, under some circumstances, be jalapenos, but that's about it. And they're rare. Uh, and, and you generally recognize them. And we were in a little diner in Cancun off the beaten path, and there was a little, you know, this was not where tourists go. And she forgot that we were in real Mexico and she just ate one of the garnishes off the table and it was freshly sliced habaneros. She was in for quite a surprise. That's not going to happen here. I've never seen a habanero used anywhere. Some foreigners do produce some peppers because they will grow here. So it's not like you can't buy hot sauce, but the idea that the food you're going to get is going to be spicy, really not a thing. You'd have to really seek that out and make an effort. The other thing is that Americans especially have a tendency to be exposed a lot for obvious reasons to Mexican food, but even that Americans don't tend to know very well. Mexican food in the United States 
isn't Mexican food. What we call Mexican in the U.S. is Tex-Mex. Getting real Mexican food in the United States, while it definitely exists, is actually quite hard because it is acceptable and legal to label an American food, because Tex-Mex comes from the American Southwest, not from Mexico, uh, as being Mexican because it's from the region near Mexico, I guess. And so because of that, uh, Americans have a tendency to be shocked by real Mexican food but when you then go past Mexico and get food that is neither the American version of Mexican nor real Mexican, but is something else entirely, Americans have a, ten a tendency to be super shocked because it is so common to paint Latin America as just extensions of Mexico. And that is not what it is. That is not at all true, even here in an area that used to be Mexico. But we used to be Mexico in the same way that like California or Nevada used to be Mexico. Yes, we were part of Mexico a long time ago, but we were never part of the Mexico City zone. And so the food here was always different, just like the food in Colorado was always different. So and both were part of Mexico around the same time period. Right. Is not, these are really good examples, actually. And if you think of, wait, Colorado was part of Mexico, you should be thinking the same thing about Nicaragua. Don't make Nicaragua more associated with Mexico than a Colorado or a Nevada or an Arizona, because actually those places are all probably closer and have more to do with Mexico than we do here in Nicaragua. So Nicaraguan food here is its own take on things. But because we're part of Latin America and have certain uh, common underpinnings, often because of the Spanish, often from pre-Columbian stuff, uh, and just because of what foods grow here, there are certain things you're going to see repeated. And so there's a lot of words that are used here in Nicaragua that people in the United States associate with Mexican food, words like taco or enchilada. And if you come here to Nicaragua and think you're getting Mexican food, you are going to be in for a surprise because this is not Mexico. Mexican food is vastly more, and I mean this seriously, vastly more exotic to a Nicaraguan than it is to an American. To an American, there is Mexican and Tex-Mex available in every town, in every city, in every state. Even if you're in Hawaii and Alaska, you can go out and get Mexican without a big problem. You can be in Maine, in New York, in California. You can always get Mexican or Tex-Mex, no problem, and normally both, and normally with a lot of variety, and there's standardization and expectations. Here in Nicaragua, Mexican is not unheard of, but it is very exotic. It would be like being in the United States and going out for Vietnamese or maybe Thai, right? Which you can do, and when people go, they generally think of it as a fun, exotic food experience. And that's how it is here. Mexican is an extreme different food that people are experimenting with, and they don't really know what to expect because there's very little familiarity with Mexican food. So all those words are different things here. And it's not because tacos belong to Mexico. It's because the word taco is used across the region and Nicaragua has their own thing called a taco. It is very little like a taco in Mexico. Just like growing up in New York, we had a thing that's called a taco. It is, Mexicans are like, that is not a taco. Like that is not at all a taco, but the Mexican taco, or the, I'm sorry, the American taco might be closer to the Mexican one than the Nicaraguan one is. The Nicaraguan one is wrapped and fried. It is very different and it is sold by uh, Fratan typically. But in New York, what we had uh, that we called a taco is a tostada in Mexico and is very, very uncommon. Um, and the way that it was prepared and stuff in, in New York would never be done in Mexico, right, is an extremely American food. And it barely could be called Tex-Mex, but it helped open uh, much of the U.S. to the idea of Tex-Mex. And now there's Taco Bell and stuff that represent Tex-Mex on a large scale. But here in Nicaragua, you're going to find that real Mexican is super rare and Tex-Mex does not exist. There is one or two Tex-Mex restaurants in the country. They do not do well. It is very much a specialty thing and a novelty uh, on an extreme scale uh, for people to go try Taco Stop in Managua which used to be in multiple places and now is only in Managua, is a specific example of that. So there's something to be aware of, that if you have this expectation that Nicaragua is like somehow part of the Mexican culinary zone, that is absolutely 180 degrees the wrong direction. This is really, really not Mexican food. You should not in any way compare it. That would be like going to the United States and being like, this is nothing like Afghani food. Well, no, but why would you expect it to be? 
right? Like that doesn't make any sense. This is the United States is not connected to Afghanistan in some special way. Nicaragua is not connected to Mexico in some special way. They do not share food other than a lot of the same ingredients grow across the regions. But even that is uh, a lot of non overlap. And there is some food that's very popular like nopal in Mexico that we grow wildly here. It's all over the place, but we don't eat it here for some reason. Uh, so Mexican cuisine is much more adventurous. It is a huge variety. It tends to be uh, really, really interesting. Individual restaurants will have a great degree of variety, which has encouraged a lot of American Tex-Mex to have a great variety at like uh, specialty taco places. But in Nicaragua, there is single flavors, single things. People do not want variety under normal circumstances. And so it is a totally different type of experience from that perspective as well. The Nicaraguans, remember, have a generally really low income. And so that does not allow for a lot of experimentation with food. You're not importing a lot of stuff. All those kinds of things are just for tourists or just for expats who have very deep pockets and are willing to spend a lot on getting specialty food brought in. What Nicaraguans do have is really high quality uh, rice and beans. They have very interesting cheeses that are made here in Nicaragua. If you like them, you're going to love it. If you don't, it's going to be super disappointing because it's nothing like cheese that you're used to. It's closer to paneer in India. It is bland. It is going to be lots of high quality meats with low variety, right? So you've got uh, really high quality steaks if you know where to shop, really high quality pork, really good chicken, but that's about it. Even though turkeys grow, uh, will, will be raised here, they're very expensive and no one wants to eat them. That's saved for the Americans for holidays, things like that. Um, you are going to find that uh, a lot of uh, corn-based foods like uh, tamales and stuff are, are made here. But again, they're not making Mexican tamales. They're making naka tamales and things like that, which are related but quite different. This is nobody here is interested in replicating Mexican cuisine. And for the most part, no one's familiar with Mexican cuisine. So it's a it's a whole mindset that you need to have. And it didn't even occur to me that I would have to tell this to people. And this is one of the challenges as someone who has traveled a lot that uh, normally, you know, you travel and you know, you're going to a new country and there's no expectation that it's tied to a different country. You don't go to Greece and then be surprised that the food isn't Albanian, even though they're pretty close to each other uh, or be surprised that they're not Italian. But Greece and Italy are a fraction of the distance from each other as Mexico and Nicaragua are. There's many countries that are quite large between uh, Nicaragua and, and Mexico, all of Guatemala, all of El Salvador, a little bit of Honduras. But if Greece and Italy are so close, they can almost see each other and there's a ferry running back and forth and they've been connected for thousands of years and, and shared colonies, but their food is quite different from each other, even though they're so much more connected. So there should be an expectation that Nicaragua is going to be, you know, it could have, you know, learned things from Mexico. It could have shared things. Of course, that could have happened, but there should be no expectation of that. It's a sovereign country that's is separate for a reason and has its own culinary history and culinary styles and, and food availability. And it's a very different climate here than other places. There's also, I had this just happen in the, in the comments today, an expectation that by being on a lake, there's going to be certain certain fish available, for example, that was said today, but it's a lake that people don't fish in. It's full of very dangerous fish. It has sharks and it has tarpon um, and, and things that you don't want to eat, things that are very difficult to fish around that are dangerous for people to go out and fish. There's very low yield and there is, unfortunately, this is just a huge negative, but Nicaragua has a lot of pollution in their, in their fresh water supplies. And so you generally don't eat freshwater fish in the country except for Lago Apanas, which is a reservoir and they're able to keep it clean. But places like Xolitlan and Colsi Bolsa, which is where the person was, they're upset that they're not getting fresh fish out of a place that Nicaraguans wouldn't eat the fish from. Now, first of all, Nicaraguans don't eat a lot of fish. That is not a traditional thing. So the expectation that there's going to be a fishing culture is a little bit of a surprise. Of course, there's fishing villages on the coast, but they are very small. It's a very non-meaningful part of the food supply. Uh, but to be uh, on Colsi Bolsa and expect that people are going to fish in a polluted lake where no one wants to eat the fish from when there's other food supplies widely available already doesn't make any sense. But they were quite upset that the food wasn't Mexican and fresh fish, things that I would not have expected. And it, it throws me off that people are going to have these expectations. Uh, so 
I, I'm realizing that these are expectation settings that need to be done because travelers to Nicaragua so often, and I know we have this channel with loads of information, but let's be honest, there's thousands of videos. So how do you find the right ones to watch before you travel? If you get lucky and watch the right one, you'll have the information. But if you're only, you know, spot checking videos, you can easily skip things. And even though I'm putting out a video about the food, you got to know to watch it and find it and actually put in the time or how would you know anyway? So I don't know how to tackle that. If you guys have ideas, certainly get down there in those comments and let me know. And what are your food experiences here? I, I want to know as well, but I don't want to hear that you're upset that it wasn't Mexico, right? Like that's honestly, that's not an okay thing to say, right? Like, oh, I went to this country. I was expecting it to be this country and now I'm upset, right? The real thing should be, I'm not a fan of Nicaraguan cuisine or I love Nicaraguan cuisine, right? Not it's wrong that people here like this food, which is what was said today, right? And that's, that's why I feel like there should be expectation setting because no one should have the reaction that other people's cuisine is wrong, that it's oh, too bland. I grew up liking spicy food, so this is too bland. I don't like it. Or I'm really used to Mexican food and I am not prepared for the variety that being in Nicaragua brings. So I'm not enjoying the variety that they have here because I'm not adapting to it right now. I'm, I personally am a very adaptable food person. So for me, Things that other people get upset about with food generally means that it's going to be exciting for me. It's different than what I'm used to, and that's my favorite thing with food. I love variety. I love exploring new food. But that's a relatively rare thing. Most people like a familiarity to food, and I totally understand why. And humans are built mostly to want to have repetitive food. Once you know something's safe and healthy, your body wants to keep doing that so it doesn't have to test the waters and maybe kill itself with a new food item that it didn't have before. So there's good reasons why evolution has pushed us to like repetitive food. It, it's logical. But not everyone's wired that way. And some of us like exploring things. And of course, logically, I know Nicaraguans eat this every day. It's not poison. So I'm able to enjoy it and not worry about it in an evolutionary survival context. But that is uh, a, a context you need to have when going anywhere. But especially here to Nicaragua, I think because people are so likely coming from North America to paint it with a Mexican brush and then be surprised that it's not actually just another Mexico, um, and uh, so little is known about it that it doesn't have these famous foods that people are like, oh, I'm going to Nicaragua. I can't wait to try the famous thing that I've heard about, except maybe Gallo Pinto. But people know that's rice and beans, and so people don't tend to get super excited about it. That it's as good as it is actually surprises a lot of people. So if anything, it kind of works in that direction in that case. But for the most part, Nicaraguan cuisine is very basic, few ingredients, repetitive, bland, high quality meats if you go out and search for it. Um, and then there's also like how people get food, right? Street food is almost entirely uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, barbecue and uh, frittangas, the, right? The idea that you're going to go out and have all this variety on, on the street with these interesting little food carts, that's not a cultural thing here. So don't expect that. That the regular restaurants, most places are going to be in a huge variety. It's not how Nicaraguans eat and there aren't enough tourists to justify having a separate tourist culinary infrastructure, except for in Granada and San Juan del Sur. And even there, it's very limited because even in those cities, the majority of people eating are not foreigners. It's just that there's enough foreigners that there is some variety being introduced. But other than that, all the Nicaragua is even Ometepe, even, you know, most of Rivas, even Leon basically has to cater solely to Nicaraguans because that's who's eating at restaurants. You know, you can go to the most uh, non-Nicaraguan restaurant in town and it's still majority Nicaraguans every night of the week. So everybody has to cater for that. Just like if you were in Missouri, you're not going to find entire areas that are catering to you know, tourists from China, for example, there just aren't enough Chinese tourists there and never will be to justify having a food infrastructure designed around giving them the food of the place they came from. Because you have to remember that a large number of tourists, maybe not the majority, but a large number of tourists going into any place, especially a place off the beaten path like Nicaragua, are going to be looking to explore Nicaraguan cuisine. They're not looking to replicate the food of where they just came from. They just had that, right? So it's it's a subset of travelers, which is already a tiny group of people who are looking to replicate the food of somewhere else. And there's no way for Nicaraguans to anticipate 
what that's going to be because everyone has a different context that they're bringing. Nicaragua is rarely seen as a foodie destination. Hot cuisine is not really a thing in Nicaragua. And those of us who live here often complain about low variety and a challenge in getting food at odd hours, at getting a large variety and delivery. And there's just a lot of challenges around food. These are real challenges that people moving to Nicaragua have to figure out. But if you learn how to use your supermarkets and where to find the right restaurants and choose where you're going to live based on your food needs, you're probably going to be fine. But it is an important thing to understand that food is not the thing that North Americans tend to uh, expect here. It doesn't work the way that they tend to expect. This is an extremely separate environment. Even places like Honduras and Costa Rica have adapted heavily to large tourist populations or large expat populations that have a lot of requirements and locals who have begun to uh, expect a little bit more variety. So they have an entirely different uh, culinary ecosystem than we have in Nicaragua. So this is something to be aware of. When you're a traveler, just be aware that your variety options are low. But if you're here for just a few weeks, as long as you have any flexibility whatsoever, there's lots of high quality, delicious food out there but it's almost always going to be bland or you're going to have to go through an effort. Of course, if you go to Managua, you can get a large variety of food and anyone would be okay for a few weeks, if not forever. But if you are going to be uh, living here, then you need to plan around that a little bit. And it is one of our biggest challenges of all the things in Nicaragua. After the litter problem, probably the lack of food variety is my number one concern. But it's also something that you can, unlike the litter, deal with in most cases. You can find different food supplies, different uh, su you know, uh, supermarkets, uh, people who will cook for you in-house, whatever. But you have to deal with it. You can't just expect to go out to the street and, and just get you know a wide variety of food. You're not going to be able to go out and just get Chinese food carts on the street. They don't exist. Uh, and that may be something that you're used to, where you're coming from, or just expect that they're going to have here because why wouldn't they? Because people really aren't interested. So setting expectations and being prepared for what food's going to be like, very important. Now, I understand that just talking about that it's bland and doesn't have a great amount of variety, uh, that there aren't the, the supply chains that you may expect that there is, it doesn't give you a lot to work with. It's a little bit, and it starts to hopefully trigger that you need to do some investigation or think about what your food needs are going to be. If you are one of those people who just needs certain foods and you want them to be replicated, and most of the places you go, they're able to do some research, it, that could be that Nicaragua is not going to have that specific food easily available in all the places you're going to go. Again, if you live here, almost anything can be solved. But if you don't live here and you're traveling, and you're just here for a few weeks and you really need something, then that could be quite a challenge. If you really need Tex-Mex, you're not going to be able to find it while traveling. It just won't be plausible. So it's important to, to consider that. But to address more accurately what foods are available, because there's general foods that are available all over the country. Again, if you go to an enclave or a very specific tourist location, that could break that, right? Obviously, I shouldn't have to say that. But again, every weird thing that you think you would never have to say, like, oh, I went to an enclave, they didn't have all the Nicaraguan food in the same way that the non-enclave did. Like, that's what the enclave means. But, or I went to a, a tourist spot and I'm not in normal Nicaragua. Well, okay, right? Like, your expectations have to adapt. Uh, are you in, you know, like if you go to the Corn Islands, that's not part of Nicaraguan culture, right? It is part of the country, but it's not Nicaraguan. When we use the term Nicaraguan to mean the culture and the food, they're not part of that. Never have been. No, they make no claim to be. They wouldn't want to be. And so it's important to understand when we're talking about Nicaragua, the country. Yes, they fall inside the political jurisdiction or Nicaragua, the culture. They are not. It is. It's not really even mosquito. It's their own thing uh, because they're they're isolated islands. But all these things you have to have some context uh, and be aware of them. But we're going to do a bunch of shows and show a bunch of food and going out and give you an idea of what real life is like, so that you can you can really piece this together. Because uh, the last thing we want is people coming and being surprised. Uh, but also we want you to be able to explore the country with us and uh, be excited because there is a lot of great stuff here in Nicaragua. But if your expectations are wrong, you're going to end up being unhappy, even if you have a really great experience otherwise. You could be like getting great food, but you're expecting something else that just makes people unhappy. So fixing that expectation in most cases will fix the experience. Uh, so that's what we want to do. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, and I will see all of you tomorrow.